The Lionel Turbine is one of the most iconic engines of the post-war period. This unique engine was part of countless sets and sits among the 700E and Santa Fe F3s in recognition. Despite this beloved P success in model form, the prototype was widely regarded as a failure. This video will discuss the failed history of the real Pennsylvania Turbine and the history of its success in the model world. Before we talk about the model turbine, we must first discuss the prototype. Pennsylvania 6200 was a one-of-a-kind member of the S2 class. Although in appearance similar to many of the road's steam locomotives, this engine differed greatly. The 6200 was powered by a massive steam turbine. This innovative design was one of many steam turbine experiments around the same time. The turbine-powered locomotive was to be the next step in steam locomotive evolution, thought to be more efficient than any of the road's other engines. Pennsylvania 6200 was delivered in 1944 and put to the test. Initially, the new design seemed quite impressive, at speed achieving a mechanical efficiency of up to 97%, compared to a traditional steam engine at just about 10%. So then, why was this engine a failure? There are several factors that lead to the failure of the Pennsylvania steam turbine project, but the largest was the engine was only efficient at high speeds. During low speed operation, at best the engine consumed a massive amount of fuel, and at worst sometimes the firebox got so hot it damaged stables. This major flaw, and the rise of dieselization by the mid-40s, no more turbines would ever be built for the Pensy. And in 1949, the engine was out of service, being scrapped by 1952. Despite the turbine widely being regarded as a failure, it would achieve one area of major success. In 1946, Lionel was ramping up production on a major scale, releasing its first full catalog since before World War II. This catalog was filled with new products and features, but one of the most prominent of which was the 671 Pennsylvania Turbine. The turbine encompassed every advancement the company had made since pre-war. The engine was equipped with smoke, automatic knuckle couplers, and a double worm drive mechanism. This new engine was certainly an impressive piece, and Lionel made sure the world knew that. The 1946 advanced catalog featured the turbine on the cover, and at the back of the catalog was the most advanced set Lionel ever produced, the electronic set. This impressive train was pulled by a 671 turbine. The turbine was not only top of the line power, but also headed up many economical 027 sets as the 2020 turbine, an engine basically identical to the 671. The wide variety of sets and offerings this locomotive seemed to imply it was the future of American railroading. Although not true in reality, this engine found its way into the homes of thousands. The turbine would receive a major overhaul in 1947, losing the poorly operating smoke bulb in exchange for a much more reliable smoke unit, as well as losing the double worm gear drive. In 1948, the catalog cover would feature a beautiful color image of the turbine. The 671 and 2020 turbine locomotives were offered for the last time in 1949, but unlike the real turbine, 1949 would not see the end of the Lionel turbine. In 1950, Lionel introduced the 681 turbine, which you can see I have on the track now. This engine was nearly identical to the 671 and 2020 turbines, except it now featured Lionel's newest innovation, magnet traction. Alright, now let's take a closer look at the 681. Alright, starting at the front of the locomotive, which is definitely the most iconic area with that massive radiator, as well as the Pennsylvania stylings with the bright red keystone and the raised headlamp. At the drive wheels, you can see one of the more unique aspects of the turbine, which is the lack of any drive gear of any kind. And the reason for that is obviously that being a direct drive turbine, it's driven from the inside, so it doesn't need the outside cylinders and the driving rods and all that sort of equipment. You can also see the, I believe it's the fan blower housing for the turbine up there. Um, some other nice molded in details and such. It's very simple. Um, again, with the lack of the drive gear and such. Now, the Lionel 682 turbine would add the small lubricating lever, albeit oversized, which fits on this front part of the driving here and connects up here, I believe, which was present on the prototype, so it adds a little bit more visual interest. Top of the locomotive, you can see those four exhaust stacks represented here, which is another one of the more iconic features of the locomotive as well as the sand dome and other various apparatus. Looking towards the back of the locomotive, you can see that massive Belfair firebox that most Pensy engines had, as well as that rounded cab roof shape, which flows really nicely into the tender. Now, I don't have the right tender for this engine. I have the 2046W hooked up to it. Now, this engine would have most commonly came with the 2046W-50, which has the Pennsylvania Railroad type on it, or the really nice six-axle uh, 2671WX tender. The 681 turbine would be offered until 1953, except for 1952, where the 671 made a return in the form of the 671RR, or re-release. This engine was basically a 681 without magnet traction due to the material shortages from the Korean War. In 1954, the last evolution of the post-war turbine was introduced. The 682 featured a realistic, albeit oversized, lubrication linkage connecting to the drive rods. The engine also had a white stripe added to the running board of the locomotive. This highly decorated turbine would be offered until 1955. The turbine would be absent from Lionel's line for the rest of the post-war period. It would not return for nearly 30 years, apart from a special TCA commemorative turbine boiler front released in 1972. In 1970, Lionel was purchased by General Mills and became part of the Model Products Corporation. Lionel MPC initially produced cheap trains made mostly from plastic. This would change by the late 1970s as a market of toy train collectors began to gain prominence. Lionel began to produce a number of high-quality collector sets and in 1979 would introduce a new product line called the Famous American Railroad Series. This line would feature five sets, each representing an icon of American Railroad. 
1984, the long-awaited final set released, the Pennsylvania. This impressive set featured five pieces of rolling stock decorated for the PRR, and most importantly, the engine, a turbine, number 6200. The post-war turbine has made its well-deserved return. Although the post-war tooling was not nearly scale in proportion or well-detailed, the engine featured a realistic paint scheme, the traditional all-black replaced by a dark green scheme with graphite smoke box, as well as a white stripe running along the running board. The engine was also number 6200, the number of the real turbine. This engine was a large step from the original 1940s turbine, but the best was yet to come. In 1986, Lionel was purchased by Richard Kuhn, and Kuhn promised to bring the company to heights never seen before. And in 1991, the next iteration of the turbine was released. But this was unlike any turbine Lionel ever produced before. This new engine was full 1 in 48 scale, super detailed, and lastly featured rail sounds, a new innovation in model train sound. Fun fact, this turbine was actually designed by Mike Wolf, who would later go on to found MTH trains. This locomotive was certainly one of Lionel's best at the time. In 1999, Lionel would bring the turbine back to its roots, when, as part of the Century Club, the post-war 671 turbine would make its return. Now, on the outside, this engine was nearly identical to its 1949 counterpart, bar the addition of the lubrication linkage. But on the inside was a brand new model, even including rail sounds. Lionel would soon re-release the scale turbine, now featuring upgraded rail sounds, smoke deflectors, and TMCC, Lionel's command control system first implemented in 1994. The scale turbine would be cataloged for the last time in 2014, now featuring many upgrades and features, including Legacy. Among the realistic Pennsylvania paint schemes were paint schemes celebrating the post-war heritage numbered 671 and 681. The turbine had come full circle. Lionel would last catalog a turbine locomotive in 2022 as part of a set in the Line Chief Plus 2.0 line. This engine would feature all new tooling, but unfortunately, it was never produced. After all, the turbine is definitely one of Lionel's most successful and iconic locomotives. Despite the prototype status as an obscure experiment which failed to gain any traction, the Lionel turbine will go down in model train history as one of the best. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a comment. And if you want to see more stuff like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks.